If you're looking to improve in Magic the Gathering or any card game of its type, one of the most important skills you can work on is the ability to formulate and apply a game plan over the course of a match. Games like Magic present you with a multitude of options and possible consequences over the course of a game, so streamlining your gameplay around a specific goal or plan and eliminating unfocused options will greatly help improve your decision making. Building a viable game plan relies on one of the most fundamental ideas of Magic theory, the concept of the beatdown and the control. Basically, in every game of Magic you assume one of the two roles, while your opponent assumes the other. The beatdown is the player trying to play as fast and efficiently as possible to win the game before the control can get comfortable, while the control will be trying to prolong the game until he can stabilize with a superior late game. While decks tend to gravitate towards one of the two roles, for example aggro decks usually being the beatdown and control decks usually being the control, this is always relative depending on the deck you are facing. A deck that usually plays aggro might become the control against a faster aggro deck by using its burn spells as removal, and a control deck might become the beatdown against a control deck that has a more powerful game ender. The easiest way to figure out if you are the beatdown or the control is to compare your late game to your opponents. The deck with the better late game is either the deck that can put out the stronger threats in the late game, or the deck that can more consistently deal with your opponent's threats in the late game. Even if your opponent's Shivan Dragons beat your Serra Angels, if you have a bunch of kill spells in your deck to deal with them, you still have the better late game. Obviously, this can get a lot more complicated depending on card interactions and what cards are drawn, but to put it simply, figure out who becomes more likely to win the longer the game goes. If it's you, you're the control. If it's your opponent, stop them from getting there by playing the beatdown. Now that you've figured out what role you're playing, it's time to take a look at what your deck's best tools are to accomplish this, and prioritize finding and casting them. Your mulligans and library manipulation should be focused on finding these cards. Got an opening hand with two lava spikes, but you're playing the control against a more aggressive deck, that should be an immediate mulligan. Figuring out what your good cards for your role are will also help you in deciding what cards you want to sideboard in and out. Some tools have great utility by being good in both roles. A lightning bolt, for example, is great if you're the beatdown as you can deal 3 damage to your opponent, but it's also excellent for playing control, since it can be pointed at your opponent's creatures. Remember to keep your sideboard in mind when evaluating your tools. Sometimes your role will be reversed entirely after sideboarding, so be sure to take all 75 cards in your deck into account. So you figured out your role and identified what your best tools are to fulfill it. All that's left now is to make your decisions according to this knowledge. Prioritize plays that are in line with your role. For example, you might usually hold up mana on turn 3 to cast Cancel in your blue control deck, and then cast a Mistral Singer on a later turn to start slowly closing out the game. However, if you are in the beatdown role, you should choose instead to immediately tap out for the Mistral Singer on turn 3, as this is a lot more productive than the Cancel towards killing your opponent. If your control deck usually uses its counter spells to counter your opponent's threats, but you find yourself in the beatdown role, it's likely better to use them to protect your creatures from your opponent's kill spells and keep your board state strong. As a general rule of thumb, the beatdown wants to get the most amount of damage and board presence out of his plays, while the control will look to play for card advantage and answer the opponent's threats. Before I wrap this video up, I want to stress that roles are never set in stone. Do not just theorize a game plan and never actually test it, because magic is a game of variance, so depending on what cards you and your opponents draw, you might be in a different role than you expected, and the more experience you get in this evaluation, the better you will recognize the games where you have to move away from your preconceived plan to win. Keep an open mind and keep re-evaluating during a match based on the current situation. Then you will become a truly great magic player. Okay, so in summary, to create and apply a winning game plan you Figure out if you're the beatdown or the control. Then, figure out what cards are important to draw and resolve to fulfill this role, and then make gameplay decisions according to this knowledge. The only way you'll get into the habit of doing this is practice and experience, so get out there and play some games. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, like and subscribe or share it with a friend. It helps out a ton. I have a lot more of these game theory type videos planned, so stay tuned. With all that being said, this is Lit Kakashi signing out. Swag on the beat, bitch.